Hi, good morning. Uh, we'll wait for all the attendees to be in before we can start, probably in another few minutes. Thank you for your patience. Good morning, all. Okay, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, thanks for joining uh, our webinar uh, presented by Vivius Academy and the Cambodia of Chimers and curated by Up Your Game Studio 16. Uh, thank you for your presence. I understand that it's a holiday yesterday and hope that you have enjoyed your holiday. Uh, today we'll be presenting Getting into the Mind of uh, Googles in SEO so by Mr. Eugene. So, of course, the outline is that uh, the digital marketing landscape has changed uh, over the years and leaders and business need to keep up with the online presence, programs and profit system to capture the existing and new market. So, one pivot point would be to incorporate the three live digital marketing campaign, namely live engagement, live experience and live entertainment. So in this webinar, you will learn new way to strategize these three lives in your marketing campaign and build customer for a lifetime. The learning, learning outcome would be the ability to up your game in business, branding and life in large. Okay, posting on different types of social media, top three video tips and top three myth. Okay, so our trainer today is Mr. Eugene. He's 
the SEO king. Uh, he's a former digital director of Standard Chart, uh, retail banking in Singapore. So he's also an avid uh, digital marketing strategist as well as certified search engine optimization, principal consultant and coach. So he has managed 360 digital marketing campaign for corporation and SME to create a digital footprint to attract, engage, and retain more customer. So without further ado, let us welcome Eugene for, uh, to give us the talk. Thank you, Eugene. Yeah, hand over to you, Eugene. Hi, thank you, everyone. Uh, firstly, I want to uh, thank King Wah and uh, the various communities for inviting me. A warm welcome to the members of Cambodian uh, uh, business, what, what, what is it? Uh, Cambodian uh, Chamber yeah. of, of uh, Commerce members. A warm welcome to you. And, uh, you know, today we, we're going to talk about something very interesting. Uh, we cannot um, basically uh, rule out Google. We, we, we cannot ignore Google. So let me get into my slides. Okay, can I confirm that you are seeing a full screen? Yes, right? Uh, yes. Okay, yep. So today the topic is uh, getting into the mind of Google. Instant SEO hacks to bring clients to you. And as, as uh, pointed out, what is the best way to bring live clients to you? And that is the way in which people are constantly searching in Google. Even when you're sleeping, people are searching in Google. So the fact of the matter is we cannot uh, ignore Google and the importance of Google uh, for businesses. So we, we're going to dive in into getting the, into the mind of Google and to understand how Google works and how we can take advantage of this and what strategies we can do to make sure that our website and various social media is basically discoverable by Google. Okay, I'll just do a very quick introduction of myself. I'm a former digital uh, director of marketing in uh, Standard Chartered Bank. We do retail banking. We do all sorts of products from loans to personal banking, business banking, and as well as investment and private banking as well, right? So I'm currently an internet marketing coach and mentor and I'm a certified SEO practitioner for many years. And I have a deep passion for digital marketing and search engine optimization. And I have a community, I founded a community several years back. It's called Internet Marketing Secrets. And today we have over a thousand members. And I will invite you to join this community so that the learning will continue later. Do not worry, um, everything will be free. There is nothing uh, that, you know, I will sell to you, right? So everything is free, free knowledge. And even if you like, uh, these slides can be made available to you. And, uh, you know, I will pass the slides to King Wah so that you guys can really download it and digest it later. So today in this day and age uh, that we have met and you have you are physically located in another, another country. You are physically located in Cambodia. Today, I, I can safely tell you that my digital name card is I am SEOKing.com. And that is my YouTube channel with over 60 videos. You can subscribe it uh, uh, at the end of the lesson. I will make this link available again, right? So without further ado, let's start. We start with the very basic on what is SEO. Basically, search engine optimization is the process in which you build an internet footprint for your business. So an internet footprint is like an online street sign 
to point people to the products and services and also to point people to your business eventually. So for example, if you have a new office and you have an office opening, you will tell us the exact location, the street name is near certain uh, prominent landmark. That is basically uh, the physical footprint in which you are telling people how to find your business. Similarly, are you doing the same? Are you leaving internet footprints so that people can find your business? Another example is an old uh, tale called Hansel, Hansel and Gretel. Hansel and Gretel got lost in the forest and they actually uh, threw breadcrumbs. They broke, they broke up the bread that they have into small pieces and actually throw, throw it on the floor so that they can trace their way back. So the question, ladies and gentlemen, that I will leave in your mind today at this point is, are you leaving digital footprint for your business so that people are able to find you? So now we come to the very interesting fact of who came first, the Google or the Yahoo. And basically, this is the timeline that I extracted from Wikipedia here that shows the era that uh, the search engines has evolved. And one important point is that 1994, Yahoo was born. But in 1998, Google was born. And today, Google is the number one search engine in the world, google.com. The number two search engine in the world that a lot of people don't realize is youtube.com, which is now owned by Google as well for many years. So we look at this, the fight between Yahoo and Google. Remember Yahoo came first and then Google came several years later and how Google was able to consolidate the market share. Basically, Google focuses on user experience. Basically, the user experience, um, Google focuses a lot on getting relevant information to you, right? And there's a strong uh, relevancy. Google came up with the, with the concept that if you have more links linking to you, your website is more popular. That is at that point in time. Later, we will see right now is not really the case, right? But at that point in time, the more links you have to your website means you are more popular. And how do you get more links to your website? You are actually leaving all these digital footprints to let people find your business. For example, you list in some business directory. That's one footprint, right? With linking back to your website. That's what I mean, right? So Google was able to provide a more relevant search results. And at that point in time, Google doesn't have ads. It's just all the organic results only. And at that point in time, uh, we must also understand that Yahoo was a directory-based engine. That means, what, uh, for example, you search, you click a particular category, like for example, children clothes. And then you link, it goes back to Yahoo and it tells you these are the people uh, that are selling children's clothes, right? But Yahoo, uh, but Google was different. Google, when you search, uh, for example, children's clothes, Google give you a list of results that when you click the results, it actually link away from Google. And at that point in time, Yahoo was making a lot of advertising money by having banners because Yahoo's concept is always to keep people on Yahoo. But Google chose a different route to be radical. They chose to direct people directly to the website of your search result. That's why they are relevant. And at that point in time, Google has not run ads. So Google has no way to monetize their traffic, but yet they do it. And another, another thing to note is Google has this uh, launch of Gmail, which was very secret. And you, know, you need somebody with Gmail to invite you 
to be on Gmail. And when you are on Gmail, naturally, naturally you will use the Google search. So that is how Google was able to so-called win the search engine was in Yahoo, despite coming back only a few years later. Win the war, the race to be relevant. So what did Google do to be relevant, right? Besides providing relevant results, which is important, Google started buying technologies. Google started buying technologies to form the basis of what we have today as Google Photos. Uh, Google uh, bought technologies to form the basis of what we have uh, on YouTube, AdWords, AdSense, Google Analytics, Google Maps, and you know the list goes on, right? So Google bought all these technologies to consolidate its position. Imagine if Google didn't buy YouTube, then today Google is only number one search engine in the world. But because Google bought YouTube, Google is number one and number two search engine in the world, right? Uh, I will leave this slide for you to, to digest uh, later on. As why I say, all slides will be made available. Next, Google started to make a series of algorithm updates because people were trying to cheat the system. People were trying to do a lot of things to cheat the system by having, you know, by repeating a lot of keywords on your website and your, your content is not useful or not readable to the human, but you are able to rank well. So what did Google do? In February 2011, Google launched the Google Panda to um, basically Google Panda is an on-page filter to detect poor content like this, repetition of keywords, but nothing useful to the user, right? So this was the concept called keyword stuffing, where you just repeat keywords in one page more than 20 times, and then you will rank. Because at that point in time, uh, you know, Google look at uh, as long as you have keywords, you will rank, but not anymore, right? So outcome of Google Panda is make sure that the results show relevant. Remember, the moment Google loses its relevancy, Yahoo will take over. Then in April 2012, Google launched the Google Penguin update, which is focusing on off-page SEO. And this was a killer to many sites because a lot of sites went crazy getting other sites to link to them in an unethical manner. And after 2012, Google Penguin addresses that. And today is not about getting as many sites to you, but it's more of getting more relevant sites to you. For example, if you are manufacturing plas plastic, are you able to get into the plastic supplier database? that link is more useful to you than a forum link, right? Forum link no longer is as useful as before. Next, we come to the Google Penguin, which is in July 2014. And Google Penguin look at the local search updates. The problem before July 2014 is this. For example, if I were to search for a ice sculptor right i have let's say i have a wedding coming up i need an ice sculpture and the problem is before google penguin when i search ice sculpture i will get results from usa but i am staying in singapore there is no way i can hire this this usa guy for my wedding sculpture so google pigeon addresses this point that if you are in Cambodia, the results will be more relevant to you and it will show Cambodian businesses, right? And this is based on the local listing as well as how close you are, proximity, because uh, Google can see your location. Let's say, for example, you're, serving, uh, you're surfing the internet from your mobile phone, Google can see your location and Google will suggest uh, businesses that are very close to you. And this, is, this update really helps 
restaurants, right? Restaurants is normally is proximity, how close you are. Of course, good food matters as well, right? So that is uh, Google Pigeon. Next, we come to Google Hummingbird. And Hummingbird was really a game changer in September 2013, right? In September 2013, Google rolled out Hummingbird. And right now, Hummingbird is able to better understand conversational search, meaning to say that I will be able to understand what is your intention, whether you key in these keywords, whether you have an intention to buy, and I will, re I will display results based on that. I will, um, Google Hummingbird was able to also understand full sentences better, right? And then next is October 2015. You see that mus muscle man there. That is Google Rank Brain. Google Rank Brain. October 2015, Google Rank Brain was introduced to better understand never seen before search query. What do I mean by never seen before search query is this. Yesterday, I decided to set up a business called Panda Ice Supplier, for example. So Panda Ice Supplier is new, is a never seen before search. So Google Rank Brain uses the fact that it is very focused on artificial intelligence, machine learning, and uh, basically it is able to understand and provide the results better over time, right? So this is used to better handle search of, for example, a new company launch, a new property launch. That is the purpose of all this, right? So next we come about Google. Is Google all about keywords? It used to be, it used to be, but it, it, it still is, but right now it's more on topics, right? We will, we will come to that later. So first point you need to understand is not all keywords are made equal. Which keyword is your buyer searching for? Okay, let's take an example. When somebody is searching for the word property in Cambodia, it can mean anything, right? It can be a student researching for properties in Singapore, a student based in, a student based in Singapore researching for prop, uh, properties in Singapore or a student based in Cambodia um, researching for the types of property. Maybe she is writing a report for her, her school on the type of properties in Cambodia. So it doesn't mean anything. Uh, so for example, let's, let's look at this keyword, apartment in Manhattan. So when someone is searching for apartment in Manhattan, what you know? They just want an apartment in Manhattan. It can also mean anything. But the moment when somebody search for a three-room apartment in Manhattan, you can see as compared to the word property, apartment in Manhattan, and three-room apartment in Manhattan, which keyword has a stronger buyer intent or which keyword when the user search has a higher probability that the person will buy. So if you are a property agent, you do not rank for property Cambodia is useless, right? You don't even rank for like apartment in Cambodia, but instead you rank for three room apartment in a certain Cambodia street, uh, four room apartment in certain Cambodia street. You know, that's how it is. That is a buying keyword. Buying keyword means people searching in the keyword has a very high intention to buy. So SEO is not about getting keywords in, it's more about identifying the buying keywords first and then researching what are the associated keywords around these buying keywords, right? And another tip is do not optimize, do not over optimize your keywords. Remember we have seen that Google Panda addresses that. If you over optimize, then your website will go into a Google penalty or Google filter, a Google penalty, or even 
your site may be de-indexed. When you get de-indexed, means that you no longer appear in the search engine, even if you were formerly in a Google Page 1 listing. Right? So next we come to this concept of the department store analogy. So imagine Google walking into a department store, which is your website, right? Is your department store well organized, right? Do you have the necessary keywords and not only the keywords, the buying keywords? Do, do you have topical, uh, topical um, relevance? That means to say, are your topics uh, sub, uh, divided and linked together, right? That is what we mean by uh, topical and also contextual. Contextual relevance is, for example, if your website talks about Apple, you must give Google some context to let Google know that you are talking about Apple, the fruit. For example, juicy. I just had a juicy apple. When you have juicy apple, it means Google will make that relation contextually that you are talking about apple, the fruit. If you have, you know, I bought a new Apple iPhone, then Google will make the association that you are uh, talking about Apple, the company. So again, is your site well organized? Does Google know the location and service area of your business, right? One of the key important thing is, there is this thing Google gave you a free directory, it's called Google My Business Listing. So if you have a business, the first step you need to do, besides having to set up your website, is create a Google My Business listing. How this works is, once you have your domain, abc.com, you link your Google My Business listing with abc.com. And the moment when you create the Google My Business listing, Google will send a postcard to verify that your business is really in their address. When you receive the postcard, there is an unlock code. You enter the unlock code, and this Google My Business uh, listing remains for you for life. Okay, it's completely free. And how does it work? Once you have a approved Google My Business listing, Google will know that the website that you key in there, Google will then crawl the website and realize that your this whole website is talking about this ABC company. And Google will know that ABC company is situated in Cambodia. And remember, we have the Hummingbird uh, update where if people in Cambodia were searching for certain products and services, and that's how you will appear, right? So is Google page one easy to achieve, right? So now we come to a very interesting part, which is the uh, demo. Just give me a minute. Let me stop share the screen first. Yes, we come uh, to the interesting part, which is the demo. And I will show to you a live uh, demo of one of the clients that I've seen, right? So can I confirm that you are seeing my Google screen right now, right? Yes, 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 huh? Yes. Okay. So we'll begin. Huh? So how does, how does, uh, how does Google know, um, you know, how to present, okay, we will, we, we will see this. So for example, coming back to the ice uh, sculpture example. So for example, if I'm searching for ice, so a lot of SEO companies, guarantee you that they can bring you to Google page one, right? So let's look at this example. I sculpture Singapore, 9 million, 9 million results, right? Okay, 9 million results, that's a lot. So uh, this is a breakdown of what we call the Google search engine result page or SERP, SERP, right? So the SERP starts with Anything that you see that has an AD, that's an ad, okay? You have no control over that because that one is you buy 
uh, from Google, right? So as you can see, uh, I am, this is Google page one, number one. This belongs to my client's competitor. Google uh, page one, number two. This is my client's website, Ice Carving Singapore. Number three is my client's website also, right? Scrolling down. What is interesting is you can see that this thing called the uh, branded image search. Let me open this. The branded image search, as you can see, is this. You have the company name and you have Ice Carving Singapore. So coming back to the example, branded keyword search is also shown. Then more often than not, you will get these people also ask. How to get on this? Actually, there's no, no uh, direct way to get on this, but one way is to have a comprehensive uh, frequently asked questions on your website particularly uh, in uh, regarding ice sculpture in Singapore and you will start to rank for this right and as you can see Pinterest this is my client's site then coming down this is called the Google uh, map pack this is my client's website already. So we have four already. Yeah? So ladies and gentlemen, um, for example, okay, let's come back to here. How would you like in having a 9 million results to have four listing for ICE Sculpture Singapore as shown before, right? Uh, next, I can show you one more and then we will, we will come back to the training itself. So Wedding Ice Sculpture Singapore. So Wedding Ice Sculpture Singapore, as you can see, this is Google page one, number one. This is a map pack listing. If you are wondering how do you get on for your map, to show basically this map pack listing is a listing in Google My Business that you claim, right? So page one, number one, page one, number two, page one, number three. This is the branded image search. This is the Pinterest. This is a video in YouTube. So as you can see, in a result, right? In this case, 4 million results, I have about 4 or 5 uh, listings, right? In, in Google page 1, right? So coming back to the training itself, just give me a minute, let me switch the screen. Hang on. Okay, so coming back to the training, is Google page one, number one, easy to achieve? How about multiple Google page one listing? As we can see in the demo, it is, I am able to achieve multiple Google page one listing for my client, right? So, so a recap, for example, I Sculpture Singapore, 11 million results. A Google search engine result page, SERP, has 10 results. Results achieved are uh, five listing on Google page one for 11.7 .7 million results. Number two, uh, number three is an image pack listing, number four, number nine, and a map pack listing as well, right? So that is what I mean, right? Multiple Google page one listing is unlocked. So everybody has been asking, right? I mean, you must be 
amazed or surprised how did I do it, right? So now we come to a very interesting topic of getting into the mind of Google, trying to know what, understand. Okay, firstly, your website needs to be topical in nature. That means you talk about certain topics, like for example, you talk about ice sculpture, ice carving, ice sculptor, you know, ice, uh, you know, ice sculpture for wedding, ice sculpture for corporate events. That's what I mean. Your website needs to be organized in topics, right? Authority, right? So authority is talking about backlinks, about getting links to your website. Basically, for this website, I get very little links. There's a lot on uh, social media shares, a lot on some standard directories. That's about it. One way in which you can get authoritative backlink is to launch a press release. For example, if you have a new company, you work with a PR company to launch a press release, and then your your website, you have done all the SEO, then you launch a press release that will give you a boost right while you slowly start to build links with, uh, and relationship with let's say bloggers or influencers in your niche right next your website has to be contextual in nature so that google will understand basically google must understand whether when you're talking about apple whether you're talking about apple the fruit or apple the company right is it relevant? Is your website relevant? Is your website relevant? Is your website readable? That's more important. Your website is not readable when you start to repeat keywords too many times. When you have too many fanciful image that is doesn't serve a purpose, right? So your website has to be relevant in your audience. Remember when doing Google, you write for the audience in mind first before you do your SEO, right? So today, Google is the dominant uh, force, as what we say. Google.com is number one. YouTube.com is number two, right? Google has an impressive market share, except China, right? No other search engine has this verb. Can you Google it, right? So now we come to what do we do before we start an SEO project, right? So are you bucking up the wrong SEO tree? So a lot of people are thinking that they are they are bucking up the wrong SEO tree. So what is it that you need to do before you start SEO, right? Market. A common mistake is if, for example, if I'm selling dresses or, you know, a party dress, I'm marketing to all female. Or, or let's go into the topic of, for example, weight loss. Your market is weight loss, but weight loss is huge right so that is market the niche let's say you niche down to you're just saying that you just want to focus for weight loss for women because it's a bigger market as compared to weight loss for men but sometimes not true right because men uh, you know they drink beer and then they have uh, beer belly and, and all that right so weight loss for women is your niche and in your sub niche could be that yes, you are focusing on weight loss for women, but you, are, but you are new to the market. You cannot be focusing on so much as compared to an established uh, uh, weight loss company. So what you can do is you can, when you start your business, you focus on the sub niche first. Weight loss for women who have just given birth. And then after that, you can slowly expand to related niche like weight loss for women who is getting married, for example. Right? That's what I mean. Start with a sub niche first. Because when you start with a sub-niche, you don't really compete with the giants. But you, you have your own competitors as well. But it's probably generally easier, easier to rank, right? Start with a sub-niche first. Next, you need to know your customer avatar. Customer avatar is very important. Are you able to map this customer avatar to your daughter or to your niece? Basically, when you are able to map for example, to your daughter, then you will know that, you know, her friends, what are their likes, what are their dislikes. And you can even do a casual survey with the friends and you say, say, you know, I'm launching this dress. Is it nice? It's meant for your age. And then they were saying like, you know, it's so old fashioned, right? Then you will know, right? Next, when you look at competitors, of course, you have to look at competitors. You have to know and understand what is their playground. 
Are they on social media? Which social media are they on? Are they active on Facebook? Are they on Instagram? Are they marketing more on Instagram to capture a younger crowd? Are they using ads? What are they doing offline? For example, if it's a restaurant, are they giving out flyers or brochures to people around or giving out flyers once people pass by their restaurant? Right, then next we talk about leads. What can you do? For example, if you're giving out flyers, you can have a QR code. Once the person, uh, you know, scan the QR code, put in their name and email address, they get a $10 voucher or they get a free coffee the next time they visit. So, or, or they can scan on the spot and they can come in and enjoy the coffee. A lot of restaurants are doing that because when you provide a free coffee or even free refill of coffee, when people start staying in your restaurant, especially when you have Wi-Fi, people will start buying cakes and all that and that's how you get sales. So this is what we call lead generation, right? It's called ethical bribe. What are you giving away in exchange of the name and email address, right? And then once they provide their name and email address, you have an email sequence in MailChimp or some mailer software to continue to engage them and to build your brand reputation. So other considerations will be customer relationship management and personal data protection. Each personal data protection act is different from different countries, but generally, if you are getting data from the customer, you must give them an assurance that you will not use or sell their data to any other company, right? So that is very important. So next we look at the SEO process, right? The SEO process talks about keywords as what we have said, keywords, whether they have commercial intent or are they just general keywords? And then you look at your website structure, you know, when, uh, like what we said, when Google walk in to a department store, you know, do they find your website organized? So for example, if you have all the female clothes, female accessory section should be all grouped together. You can't have a men's style in a woman's department. That's what I mean, right? Your content needs to have on-page SEO best practices. And uh, on-page SEO meaning do not repeat the keywords too many times. Later, we'll come through the process of on-page SEO. Your images on website and also on Google Photos. As you can see, those branded images earlier, in the earlier example, those are the images that are pulled from Google Photos. Video. Are you optimizing video? A lot of people say, you know, doing a video is very difficult. Can you, can you start by doing an image slideshow? The different type of um, plastic bottles that you manufacture. Are you able to do like a slideshow, do a simple image with your, with your website uh, at the bottom with a bar that says your website and your contact information. And then you just do a slideshow of 10 to 15 images. They are, they are easy and free image to video uh, converters online. You can just search image to video converter and you will be able to do up a video in a couple of minutes only, right? And next, we talk about backlinks. Backlinks is the concept of people linking to you. And as we know, it's no longer about quantity. It's no longer about having a thousand backlinks. If you have a thousand backlinks and I have only hundred links, I can outrank you because the, every link that I get is a link from a relevant people or relevant website in the industry, whereas you are just getting all sorts of links. So that plays a part in trying to rank high on Google. A bit of common sense in uh, you know, Google, making sure, especially in terms of competitor research, make use of common knowledge. Common knowledge are those knowledge that are, appear in the newspaper, in the magazine. So that's how you do research, right? So next we come about the website. Anatomy of the website, we talk about domain and hosting. So basically in domain and hosting, generally 
if your website area of business is in Cambodia, generally you will get a Cambodia hosting. And you will also make sure that you have secure sockets layer. If you do not know how to set up secure sockets layer, liars with your web hosting company, they will be able to help you. Next, we look at on page or internal page factors. And basically, this talk about, you know, the answer about uh, do you want to use WordPress? Do you want to use Wix? Do you want to use uh, Shopify? So you need to determine the platform um, and also make sure that your content on your page has repeat the keywords a few times and have topical relevancy, right? Then that, uh, topical and contextual. So it has to talk about the topics and it has to have certain relation so that Google understand the context that is you're talking about Apple, the company and not Apple the fruit right external all page factors basically generally is the submission of a google sitemap if you're using wordpress or there is a plugin that enable you to auto generate the google sitemap so every time your website updates um basically google will be informed next you have tracking info you will put something uh for example, you have all the relevant Facebook pixel, Google remarketing pixel. Uh, reason for this is if you are using SEO, you're getting uh, traffic to your website. A more effective marketing is you can use Facebook ads to people who have visited my website over the last 180 days. And for example, tell them, if you check out or if you buy this party dress now, I give you a $10 discount or I waive the $15 delivery charge. Okay, that's what you can do, right? That's the power. And Facebook is particularly good in this. For example, if, I, if you use SEO to your e-commerce store, and basically you use a Facebook remarketing ad for people who have visited your website over the last one month, and you give them an offer. And more often than not, people will convert if the offer is good, right? So that, that's what you mean. And then it's important to have uh, tracking as well. You need to install Google, Google Analytics. It's a free tool by Google. You can install Google Analytics so that you can know every day how many people visit your website, which are your popular pages, which are your pages that uh, people, after they visit the page, they close the browser. Then once you know that, let's say for example, page A, People who visit that page always close the browser. Then you look at it, you realize that page A has a very big image that takes a long time to load. Then you need to fix it, right? So analytics will give you the ability to fix your website so that your website gets faster loading speed. And yes, loading speed is a ranking factor for Google, right? Next, you have the secret informant to Google. Every time you update uh, this, secret informant will inform Google. For example, that is the Google sitemap. And next, we talk about off-page SEO. What are the links you are building to your website, right? So this is an example of a perfectly optimized page, or this is what we call on-page SEO. As you can see, this page talks about chocolate donuts. Right, you have the chocolate donuts in the main title, and you have also in subtitles you will have a uh, chocolate donut as well. In the first paragraph, try to have the word um, chocolate donuts. For the images that you use, it needs to be chocolate donut dot jpeg or jo chocolate donut Mary Bakery dot jpeg. Right, it's just that you just need to rename the image name to contain the keyword. Right, in your content blog, you just repeat a few times. In the last paragraph, make sure you have the word chocolate donut. So basically, in essence, in one page, you, you probably try to repeat the keywords about four to five times, right? So that is on-page SEO. Backlinks, backlinks, backlinks. As we were, what we call is how many people are linking to you, right? So we have talked about the concept of link popularity. Link popularity, for example, if you have a thousand links and I have a hundred links, 
you, your link popularity is better than me. But when we look into link reputation, then your thousand links, you, you pay someone in Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R dot -R com. Basically, you can do anything for $5, but please do not get somebody to link to your business for $5 because your link, then you will realize that your link reputation will come from classifieds and even some uh, uh, obscene uh, websites as well. So link reputation is very important. We are no longer looking at link popularity. Link reputation is the way to go right now. Next is we look at a concept called link diversity. Means link diversity means uh, you know you have a press release link, you have a link from a directory, you have let's say um, uh, blogger, blogger a link from a blogging website or influencer website link from social media. That's what that's what it means by link diversity. Means does your link your link do not come purely just from websites or your link do not come purely from press release alone. So try to diversify your links, but also in the process of getting links, make sure it's relevant uh, to your business. Next, we look at the speed of link building. The speed of link building, basically, if I engage a Fiverr guy and the guy guarantees you within one day, I can give you 500 links, that is a red flag, right? So that's what I mean. Google also look at the way in which you are building links, whether it is natural or unnatural. So definitely in one day you get 500 links, definitely that is not natural because that's not humanly possible because a lot of these fiber guys use uh, artificial intelligence and robots and programs to help them and more often than not they hack, right? So that's a no-no. So immediate tips on improving SEO for your business. Remember in the slide where Google bought technologies, when Google bought technologies, they own the technology. So this is what we call Google love Google concept. Google bought YouTube years ago. Google bought certain company to form Google Photos. YouTube and Google Photos, a lot of businesses are not using it. How do you use Google Photos? Basically, you have the, your image, you create a branded name with your website URL, and you rename that image to Ice Sculpture Singapore, and you upload into Google Photos. That's all. YouTube, like what I say, you just create a video. Simple image like show video will do to get started. Or you can also get some influencer to interview you. That is one way to get authority, get an influencer. For example, if you're you are selling weight loss, you get uh, some influencer that is uh, a mummy blogger. For example, most of her followers are all young mothers, right? And young mothers, some that have given birth, they are your target market because you are weight loss for women who have just given birth. So get this influencer to interview you on why you think it is important and how your product can help, right? So that's one way, right? That, that is uh, what you mean by, um, you know, influencer. So coming back to the topic, Domain and hosting, try to host in the same country uh, because this will affect loading speed and Google will somewhat know that, okay, if you are hosting in a Cambodian web hosting company, you are a Cambodian business and then Google will look whether you have a listing in Google My Business and then you try to have the keyword in your domain name if you can, but most, most of you have a corporate site. So yeah. Buy a secure uh, socket layer for your SSL, for your website. Get that hooked up uh, with your web hosting company. Now, we come to website performance, right? Beautiful images. Beautiful images with too little text, too large file size. This is commonly associated with interior design companies or people who are designing, for example, the kitchen cabinet or the home wardrobe, right? So beautiful images, yes, is nice and appealing to the audience, but 
is not appealing to the search engine because if you do not have text or you have very little text, it's very little that Google has to understand your contextual relevance of your website. So how do you do this? Normally, often than not, you will create a separate section called blog and you will blog about certain topics. While maintaining the beauty of your website, you have another section called blogs. If people are interested, people will uh, view the articles and that's how you ensure that people stay on your website longer and hopefully they will convert to your customer. Pay attention to mobile optimization for your website. Today is a must that all websites has to be mobile optimized. And the latest themes, especially like, for example, if you're using WordPress, the latest WordPress themes enable you to do that. You do not need to do any coding for that. Take note of the website speed. Website speed is very important and website speed are normally associated with big images, unnecessary scripts, and too many plugins, right? Content optimization, always write with the readers in mind and then the search engine. Ensure that you write in a topical relevance, contextual relevance. That's what we see. Topics, your niche, subcategorize your niche in different topics. Weight loss for women who are just given birth. You, you can even talk about, like for example, the pregnancy process and all that because all this is somewhat related. The more you write, uh, the deeper you get into your niche, the more authority Google sees your website as, right? Optimize image file names with keywords. Now we come to local SEO. Local SEO, very simple. List your business in Google My Business so that it will appear in the Google Map search. So coming back to the example, I Sculpture Singapore, Google Map search, it will appear. Um, if you are searching I Sculpture Singapore, the results might appear slightly different for you because of this, uh, you know, the, the hummingbird update, right? Uh, it, it might or might not uh, show as, as what the result I show you, right? List in general directories. General directories are like hot frog, right? And trade specific directories. Trade specific directories is more important than general directories, but general directories, you need to have a listing as well, right? So keep your listing format Consistent. Business name has to be consistent. The way you write your address has to be consistent. The way you have, you will write your phone number with international code uh, plus six five, for example, for Singapore. If your, your phone is plus six five, make sure you list in Google My Business as plus six five. Uh, your general directories as plus six five. Your trade directories as also plus six five. So one way to do is firstly, before you start listing, just open a notepad. This is my business name. This is my address and this is my phone number that I'm going to do. And then you can, for this kind of thing, this kind of listing, you can actually get Fiverr to do it. You know, uh, I want to list in this directory, this directory, but not because directories are actually safer option for link building. If you just tell them, no, I want to get thousand links, uh, that's a no, no, right? Video optimization in YouTube. Are you leaving money on the table for not being in Google? YouTube is the second uh, uh, for not being in YouTube, right? Are you leaving money on the table for not being in YouTube? YouTube is the second largest search engine after google.com. Have a presence in YouTube and optimize it for search. As you can see, uh, Wedding Eyes Capture Singapore, it appears in Google search as well. Social media images and go live technology. Stay where your competitors have presence in. Try to write better content. So that you can outrank them, have a presence in social media, have branded images in photos, and also now go live technology is very important. If it's relevant for your business, try to do you know Facebook Live, YouTube Live, if it's relevant, right? Okay, so that's all, folks. Uh, do join my free online community. This is my free gift to you. The learning continues as at imsecrets.imseoking.com. This is a Facebook group of a thousand members. t.me slash seo4b. seo4b means seo for business, right? So this is my Telegram group that I just started. And my YouTube channel is imseoking.com, right? 
So as a last parting note, be on the radar of Google always. Thank you. You can take a snap of this. Thank you, Eugene, for the informative talk. Uh, if you all have any question, please feel free to put in in the Q&A and we will answer to you accordingly. I, I believe all of us have learned something, uh, some tips from Eugene on how to rank our, our, key, our company keywords uh, on Google. And hopefully you all have also learned something about it. Yeah. So I, I, I give you guys uh, like kind of like five seconds to take a snapshot of this so that later on you can just uh, follow me and you can actually, if you have uh, problems, you can either, either uh, you know, post your questions in the Facebook group, mm. which is the first link, or the Telegram. Normally, I'm more responsive on Telegram, so you can actually uh, post in Telegram and I will give you some video references that will help uh, you or I can record the video for you. Yeah. Definitely. I think uh, Cambodia is very well versed in Telegram. There. Yeah. Okay, if we have nothing, thank you for joining our webinar. And yes, I, hope I think, I, I think there's, I, I saw there's, uh, there's some remarks here. Let me stop. There is a question here that how to be top rank of SEO by keywords. I think you have answered that to a certain extent. Or you want Wait. to... Uh, okay. So generally, um, how to be top rank of Google's by keywords? Basically, your your research uh, process is very important. That's why I say you need to see the area uh, in which where your where your compete where your competitors are competing, and where they are not. In the areas where your competitor is not competing you try to go into there and basically keywords how to be top rank or seo in keywords the first thing about being top rank in keywords is this the most important thing is you need to determine what is the buying keywords no point ranking for property cambodia you are better off ranking for three room apartment in a certain Cambodian street or three room apartment in a certain uh, suburb or town in Cambodia. You're better off ranking for that. So before going crazy on how to rank keywords, take a step back and really try to see what is the buying keywords. That's, that's for sure. Number two, be on the platforms uh, that Google have purchased. For example, YouTube, uh, uh, Google Photos, I have shown you that basically just by a simple trick of just putting your URL on the image and renaming the image to particularly keyword name.jpg and uploading that to Google Photos. As you can see in the Ice Capture Singapore example, that will give them the prominence in the image search pack when it appears in the um, Google search results, right? So how to be top rank in uh, keywords in SEO? I, I, I think generally I would, I, would advise, I would strongly advise you to join uh, my Telegram group to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've got a two hours SEO video on that that uh, you know, talks about you know, SEO and all that. I will constantly be generating content for YouTube as well. And definitely we, 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 we can have another you know, session where uh, we can have another another sessions or sessions definitely so you cannot find my telegram um it's seo for b i think if you are you are from telegram i think you type seo for b in in, in telegram right or you can use uh, you, you can uh for example what, what you can do is from your mobile phone you can open a browser, you type t.me slash SEO for B, then they will see that the, this is the, the Telegram group is called Internet Marketing Secrets. There's a join button. When you click the join button, it will straight away open up your Telegram and then you can join from there. Yeah. Right. Really, thank you very much yeah. Okay. Yeah. for listening. Uh, do you have any, any last questions? Anybody has any last questions? before we can, you know, close the thing. 
us. Okay, before I close it also, I would like to okay, inform that there will be an upcoming webinar next week okay, on how to grow your business using content creation, which you all can join uh, our weekly webinar. Uh, yeah. okay. If uh, you all don't have any questions, thank you for thank you Eugene for your talk and uh, thank you for participating. And uh, we hope to see you next week. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Eugene, we are. Uh, uh,